Students teaching one another has been very important in my classes. And I've unambiguously shown that it works. It helps students learn the material better. The question that we don't know yet is how is it that students are teaching each other? In order to address that question, we've equipped two classrooms, one a traditional amphitheater classroom in the Science Center, the other a studio classroom where students sit in groups of four or five around tables with a battery of high definition cameras in order to record, record all of the interactions that take place in the classroom between the students. So we can literally pick out every and each individual student, look at both their posture the orientation of the face, do that completely by a computer, looking at the gesticulation, how they're using their hands, and um, also listen into the audio. So when they talk to each other, we can actually follow their conversations and pick up how it is that students are teaching each other certain concepts. One of, one of the first questions we want to address was um, how long and how many students are on task, are actually engaged with the material? Are they just turning to each other and talking about, I don't know, the football game last night? Or are they actually talking about the problem that we've asked them to think about? And it turns out that most students, meaning in the high 90%, are on task for most of the time. So that is really great. Now the other component of the project are the handheld devices that the students are using. So basically what I do is I ask questions in the classroom. I let students think about each question individually, commit to an answer. So they answer the questions on their consumer devices. Then students talk to each other and they answer again. By comparing the number of correct responses after discussion to the number of correct responses before discussion, I can establish a gain which tells me how effective the discussion was. Now one of the things we found is that if we control the pairing of students, who talks to who, we can triple that gain with respect to what happens in a class where the students select their own discussion partner. So, before, we don't really tell students, talk to your neighbor. We tell students on the screen, talk to Allison on your left. Uh, and it does the pairing based on what we know about the interaction between those particular students and what we know about the answers they've given. So one of the, one of the conclusions we, we, we got was that it's not essential to always pair students in such a way that one of the two has the correct answer. What is more important is that they have two different answers. So in the studio classroom, we have a slightly different approach. Students sit in groups of, in teams basically, around table, and the discussion partners are basically all the members of the team. Um, so there, we never tell them, discuss it with the person on your left, on your right, or, or sitting across the table from you. No, we just tell, discuss it with your team. However, we form the teams. And the teams stay together for a month to work on a project in a team fashion. And one of the things we're doing is we're using all kinds of different team formation algorithms in order to make effective teams. And one of the things we're very interested in is what are effective team formation algorithms and, and how do you make the most efficient uh, teams? A success to me looks like being able to tell other faculty without having them to install this whole apparatus, here's a simple prescription of making effective teams in your class. Or to teach our handheld devices, which more and more faculty are using here at Harvard and beyond actually right now, this is the best way of matching students with different answers in a, in a more traditional uh, classroom. The data is definitely showing that it's the process that matters more than the, than, than the outcome to many students. They want to not just have the right answer, they want to have the right answer because they've had this aha moment. And you know, that's all that I'm after. I, w I want the students to have the aha moment. <laughs>